Once again, the melodious voice of Roger, Mud Fossil University, talking today about carbon dating. Everybody knows about carbon dating. They say, oh, C14, we can tell how old this organic thing is. And looking into it, you will see that they say that plants and animals assimilate carbon-14 from carbon dioxide throughout their lifetimes. When they die, they stop exchanging. They stop exchanging carbon. When they die, they stop exchanging carbon. This is their statement. With the biosphere. In other words, they retain it internally and it does not leave. That's called carbon fixing. Fixed in the body of the dead creature. Now, and their carbon-14 content then starts to decrease at a rate determined by the law of radioactive decay. Because carbon-14 is a radioactive, highly uh, energized state of carbon which is unstable and it decays and gives off radiation at a certain rate. I'll accept all that. So, remember this statement, when they die they stop exchanging carbon with the biosphere. Let's look a little deeper into that. All right, this is a highly respected ACS publications, most trusted, most cited, but most read, chemical reviews. Now, what are we talking about? Carboxylate, now carbon, carboxylate-assisted transition metal, catalyzed CH bond functionalization mechanism and scope. What we are talking about here is the movement of carbon with this transition metal complexes throughout organic tissues forever. It does not stop. Now, there was a time when they thought that it did stop and they were wrong because now they've found that it does not stop. And I have been saying it does not stop. And it can't stop because hydration, aqueous transition metal transfers of minerals and metal, metal, other metals and other uh, molecules within your body, glucose and all acids and different, you know, removing things and gases. All of that happens due to these transition metals because of their deorbital access. They, they have an empty spot in the deorbital and they can bounce back and forth with one little electron. Now, this was done, this is no, these aren't you know, people just playing out in the woods. These guys are Max Planck and so forth. So uh, it's a it's a it's a serious a serious um, analysis of the situation. And what they found was that the traditional things there was three different modes. Forget all that. However, what they found was more recent mechanistic studies indicate the existence of a continuum. That means continuously. Not just it happens and it goes away. Continuum of electrophilic, amphiphilic, and nucleophilic interactions. And what does that mean? That means invasion, replacement. And what does that mean? It means the carbon that was there goes away and new carbon comes in. And what does that mean? It means the carbon that they think they're testing that was fixed is not fixed. It is a continuum Within this continuum, detailed experiment and computational analysis provides strong evidence for the CH, which is carbon, hydrogen bond, metallation mechanisms relying on assistance of bifunctional ligands, which I've been talking about, which is the single little nip they hold on with one single electron, bearing an additional Lewis base, and then they go into all this, but uh, most prominently carboxylates. Carboxylates, carbon. That's what moves these things around. And I'm going to show you one last thing. So I'm saying carbon-14 is, is not reliable. It cannot work in the way they're saying because it does not fix. And this is the key that tells you it doesn't fix. All right. Now, I'm going to show you why I can also say that from an actual opal, which opals do not... Are, 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 I'm sorry. Opals are made from um, transition metals that invade continuously until they get stable. And I, and I can show you that in absolute, unimpeachable, unquestionable detail.
this is a cross section of a human heart and these are the you know the ventricle walls and the outside the muscles and it has fascia and the aorta and all this different stuff and this heart strings now it looks like all normal tissue which you no know, that's fine but there is so much specificity here that you don't understand now if this thing died and turned into an opal, which it will eventually if it's in the right conditions, and it has, and I will show one that did, um, what would the, what would it look like as an opal? Well, let's see. All right, this is an opalized heart, and they opalize in, in literally petrify in blood, so they have all the transition metals. And you can see that all these things have stabilized in the exact places they they want to stabilize in and that did not happen instantaneously this is a process of invasion come on in here until they find all of the molecules they want to become stable at that point everything starts to stabilize and turn solid and that's an opalized heart now we have to deal with this and I'm going to show you one that um, one of the mud fossil researchers found um, Phil Phil Harris, and uh, I'll show you, it's, it was in the transition stages, it's very obvious. All right, Phil Harris went out, you know, I was consulting with him about mud fossils. I said, go out and take a look, and he did, and boom, we found this. And that's the blood coming out, he cracked it open, those are the ventricles of the heart. That's the FeO2 side, I mean, uh, as that's the, this is the red blood side, obviously, FeO three and that's the feo2 ish area now here's what happened after a couple of hours of being out he said about after an hour or so you see that the red blood has started to oxidize now and everything and these are the you know all the passageways of the blood into the heart so this this obviously has not is I obviously when he looked up when he saw it he saw the red blood was leaking out of it this is how stuff moves and it transfers until it stabilizes so they they really need to take a new look at things and C14 does not work all right remember now hydrated transition metal ions hydrated means in water aqueous these are the colors these are the transition metals. They hook up with the carbox with the carbon and they form carboxylates. They carry things around the body and deliver them to where they're needed using a single electron attachment to these 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 states that these 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 things possess. I'm going to have to go too deep, but you can see the colors. You can see that these are supposed to be in water, hydrated. They're in transition metals. They carboxylate with well carboxylation <laughs> carbon all right so now let's go see what this heart looks like there i showed you the regular basic heart just a brownish looking tissue what would happen if these things were able to attach to it and the only way these things would be able to attach to it is over time all right you listen to me carefully only over time Right. If we see these colors in there in real specificity, it didn't happen like that. It happened over the course of time, which means carboxylation, which means continuum, which means continuous movement of carbon in organic things until they completely turn literally to, to a, a glassy-ish substance and become completely stabilized and opals are a form of, of a very good form of stabilization. I don't know if they're completely stabilized. I don't think they are, but they're, they're, things will actually turn to literal glass eventually. That's the nature of this, and I think diamonds are the last hurrah of this transition and this continuum and this giving off of organics because carbon is the last thing the last thing to go in the heat spectrum and what they call this continuum is pyrolysis pyrolysis is heat they go down deeper and deeper into the earth and they find deeper and deeper transitions of stones into actual stone where the the gases are driven off by a process called pyrolysis 
So there's a lot to, to, to learn and it's very interesting. So, uh, but my, my point is the carbon 14 day just doesn't work. So I'm going to show you that heart and then we'll go from there. So to wrap it up, Mud Fossil University makes these claims. Source rock becomes petroleum. That is fully understood in the petroleum industry. The process is pyrolysis, they claim, which is heat related compression of rocks where they begin to continuously transition. The assumption is that carbon fixes at death. Uh uh. Wrong. Carbon never fixes. Wait, 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 did I see that right? Carbon never fixes. Wait, there should have been an ever. Carbon never ever fixes. It travels. It's called carboxylation. Therefore, a little scientific notation there, C14 dating is unreliable. The case now is closed. Now, to show it in one last full, a beautiful, magnificent, mud fossil way. We have three lungs here. Now, Exhibit A has been DNA tested and the DNA was taken right out of this area here which is blood red rich. This one here I just is, is in a, a partial decay where the pleura has begun to to come off and you can see I just uh, put it there and it hydrates quite quickly there's blood under there in that fleshy tissue this the pleura is completely removed and we're seeing the little blood vascularization and this is at a complete state of decomposition there's a little the red blood is still uh, in the iron is, is is quite obvious here but um, the tissue is completely devoid of its organic stuff which now that would have been transitioned and and the gas and oil industry would have sucked all the gas out of the ground that this thing produced and eventually this will transition more until it becomes uh, like this and then like this that's the way it works it's a continuous transition process C14 does not work and they don't understand rocks either. So the rocks were, as you can see, alive. And the petroleum industry knows that. They say it transitions. We're looking for the hydrocarbons to come out of those dead rocks. Go to, the, go to industry to find out what is real. Because they make things simple, too. They say, Here, well, here's how I did it, and this is what happened. Well, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. In this case, it was wrong. Because they were relying on apparently academic geology to tell them how, what the structure of the earth is like and, and that's totally inaccurate, totally wrong. All this stuff is very, very, very wrong and it needs to be examined instead of just hidden from. So that's what I'm trying to do at Mud Fossil University. Free, a word rarely heard, <laughs> on YouTube and also Mud Fossil Uni University on Facebook. Come on, join in, learn about the reality of life. If you've got a problem with it, speak up. But don't just walk away from it, don't hide from it, don't ignore it. If you're an academic, if you're a, a, a scholar, an authority, an expert, that's all right. The things are different now. Just take it and, and go run with it, but, but don't run from it. All right? I love you guys. Come on up and um, ask some questions.